What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series and before we get into anything, I just want to thank you guys for all the support that you gave me on the last episode. We managed to get over 50 likes and I have been away over these past couple of days which explains why there wasn't an episode yesterday but I'm back doing daily uploads again as we have a little look at the league table here. We're currently sitting in second before we go into a game against Oxford United here in the Power League 2. And we're doing pretty decent. I'd say we're on a decent run of form at the moment. But we've got to keep up with Luton. They're also on a decent run of form. And they are one point ahead of us in first place. We are on 19 points. They are on 20. So we really do need to win this next game against Oxford. And maybe at a minimum get a draw really. It depends what result Luton get in the next game basically. But before we get into this video I just want to mention something very quickly. And that is I will be doing a Q&A this weekend. Probably either Saturday or Sunday. So do look out for that. And I also have a very special video coming either Thursday or Friday. Depending on when this video goes up. It's probably a Wednesday. I have been away so that is the reason why there has been. A little bit of a lack of uploads or possibly a lack of uploads. I don't know. I'm recording this in advance so I have no idea uh, when the videos have gone up or what videos have actually gone up. But um, yeah, that, that's that done and dusted. I also want to talk about the upload schedule for my channel now. I've been uploading at quite a late date, especially for UK time. For Americans, it's probably an ideal time to watch my videos because uh, depending on where you live in America, it's probably... My videos probably go up about 4 o'clock American time, maybe 5 o'clock. I'm not really sure about the time differences, but I've, I've been uploading very late UK time, probably about 10 to 11 o'clock. Now, if you guys want me to change the upload schedule, I'll happily upload maybe about 4 o'clock uh, UK time. I might actually end up doing that, as uh, I know a lot of you probably do miss the episodes because they do get lost in the sub boxes. A lot of people tend to upload quite late at night. A lot of YouTubers do, so maybe I'll have to change the upload schedule so that it does accommodate everyone and everyone gets a chance to watch the video, basically. But I'm not too sure about that. I'll probably experiment with that, but uh, either way, I will sort that out one way or another. But in this game, Oxford United, they, well, you can see they, they were just having all of their men back. Just defending, ultra defensive. It was very, very frustrating in this game. That was our best chance, really, with James Dunn in the second half. But unfortunately, we couldn't turn in any of our chances. And in the end, it's a disappointing nil-nil draw. Really, we should have done better against an Oxford United side that haven't really been doing too well this season. You can see there, they only had one shot, and it wasn't even on target. They had good passing accuracy, yes, but we dominated in possession. And we certainly deserved to come away with a win in that match. But nevertheless, we obviously didn't play well enough to get the win. We only had three shots on target and five in total. So, so I guess we're not really creating enough chances, basically, to be winning these important matches. But it does mean that we do fall down to third place, which is very frustrating. And we can see there that Jed Wallace says that he still wants to be picked for the team, even though he's just creating all of this drama around him. And it's very, very frustrating. But I will not be letting him leave the club. As we see there, Remy Bakar, our scout future star. He looks really, really good. He's been downgraded in overall a little bit, but his potential has actually been upgraded which is very good to see. So he's going to be a really good player for us. When he does turn 16 in May, I will certainly sign him up. But in the meantime, we'll have a little look at the squad report, seeing the players that have grown for this month. If you do want to see any players that have grown, please feel free to pause the video and have a look at the players that have grown. But to be honest, we really do need to invest in a new left back. It's clear to me that Nicky Shorey isn't doing too well and relying on Dan Butler every single match isn't working out too well. I mean, he's 59 overall at the age of 20. So he's a decent overall. I guess he's on the verge of really being a subpar player, really. And clearly, I need to invest in getting a new left back and also maybe a new left mid. Because, of course, with the injury of Rolando Ahrens, we really don't have that much depth out wide. And maybe I do need to get a new left midfielder. But to be honest, getting a striker, that isn't a priority. You can see we've got so many strikers there. Tom Elliott, he really hasn't had a chance since arriving from Cambridge. And I do feel sorry for him because he is a good player. But I just haven't been able to give him the chance. Because the strikers that are playing at the moment, you know, I've got Taylor, I've got Zivkovic, I've also got Maxwell Cornet. 
They've they've just been in fantastic form. I've also got Miles Story as well on loan from Swindon Town, but he as well is another player that hasn't been getting into the side because I just don't need them at the moment. When when I get injuries, maybe they'll shine, maybe they'll get into the first team, but for the moment they're only really going to be playing cup games and reserve matches, and it's clear to me that they don't really like their role at the moment. They're not very happy as we go into this game against AFC Wimbledon here, and we are playing in the rain. I don't usually like like playing in the rain I actually forgot to turn it off because usually I just turn off the rain because it's just very frustrating to play in but I thought let's give it a go let's just give it a go and see what it's like in the rain and you can see we've got a fully strengthened side back into this match we didn't really have the best of sides in the Oxford United match so I was hoping we'd be able to get a few chances in this match but we can see possession very early on here and it's Paul Robinson again a really really disappointing player on loan from Millwall maybe I'll have to terminate his loan I don't know he's a decent centre back but he's nothing more than that I'd say that Watmer's better than him and he's 57 overall so clearly there's something wrong there he's obviously not a solid enough centre back and I need to invest in that area as well as getting a left back, a left mid. I really need to do a lot of investing as we pick up a free kick here in the 41st minute. As Zivkovic stands over it, I thought, let's try something new because I haven't been doing free kicks uh, terribly well and I decided to lay it off and Zivkovic had an opportunity to score and of course, well not of course, he scored it but it was a bit of a weird goal. We'll look at it back. It's a very, very strange goal. It took a massive deflection off the defender. It looks really good uh, when I first hit it. I thought, what a fantastic goal that is. But looking at it again, the goalkeeper, well, he probably should have saved it. If it wasn't deflected, he would have saved it for sure, I think. But because it was deflected by the defender, the man in the wall... He couldn't do much about it. The goalkeeper couldn't do much about it. And none of the AFC Wimbledon players could do anything about it. Zivkovic somehow gets the goal and makes it 1-0 there in the 42nd minute. Just before half-time. And that is exactly what we need. A little boost in confidence after that draw against the Oxford United. But we see here that one of the Wimbledon players does go down. Now, usually, I don't usually show these things uh, happen, but... I was very intrigued. I saw that the referee did play the advantage, but usually he forgets about it, especially when a player does get injured, goes down and gets injured. But Barcham does get a yellow card there, which is a little bit frustrating. We were picking up a lot a lot of yellows in this game, and that was because it's in the rain. You, you're more likely to make mistakes, basically, as Taylor goes through here. Has a shot, but very unlucky, as the goalkeeper manages to save it. And the defender, I don't know why he didn't just clear it first time. He took it almost all the way to the end of the pitch into the goalkeeper's goal but I have no idea what he's doing there but nevertheless we pick up a corner we cross it in and it's Danny Hollands to get the header in and get his first goal in a Portsmouth shirt here to make it 2-0 and really that was game over after that Wimbledon had no chance of getting back into it a really good header the first header that I've actually scored from a corner on FIFA this year yes you heard it right. I haven't scored a single header from a corner, I believe. I might I might have scored maybe one or two. But apart from that, they're very, very rare this year. But Danny Hollands manages to get it at the near post. And he is another player that's in fantastic form at the moment. Really debating on whether to drop Bigger Romana. Because Bigger Romana is also in good form. But I don't want to play Danny Hollands at CDM. Because he just doesn't play well there. He is as suited as a CM slash CDM. But to be honest, he's more of an attacking midfielder to me. He plays a lot better there. And that is exactly where I'm going to be playing him. And good news for us. Luton did drop points, which meant that we do go back up into first place as well. You should, you may have been able to see it there. They did lose 1-0 in the match. I think it was against Burton Albion, I believe. Uh, but anyway, we are going into the third and final match of this episode. It's going to be in the J Payne Trophy against Gillingham here. And it's a really, really good chance for us to go through. Because Gillingham, I don't have the most solid of sides. I did give my reserve team a little bit of a go. With my team sheets on, it's very, very useful actually having those team sheets because it means you can rotate sides very easily. And right here, I'm giving Nicky Shorey a chance, giving my strikers a chance, even Dunn. I'm giving him a chance in this match. And the first chance in the game did come as Drennan got played through by Dunn, but unfortunately, the goalkeeper just about manages to save it. 
and it remains at nil to nil. Really good save, actually. Looking back at it, he gets a fingertip to it, and it's a really, really good save by the Gillingham keeper. But the next chance in the game would come as Drennan plays through Cornet here. This is in the 27th minute, and Cornet manages to get round one defender, and then fake shots inside, has a first-time shot. And that is a really, really, really nice goal, I have to admit. Cornet has been a little bit underrated this season. I mean, I haven't given too much game time. But maybe I should replace him with Taylor. He, that is a fantastic goal, you got to admit. Gets by one defender who helplessly slides in. Get past another with a fake shot and a really, really tidy finish into the top right-hand corner. Or is that the left-hand corner? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's still a nice goal. And that's his first goal in a... In a, in a Portsmouth shirt. I was about to say Bristol Rovers shirt, but of course it's not Bristol Rovers, is it? And talking on the topic of Bristol Rovers, I think I may have to sign Ryan Brunt in January. Maybe that is an option that I go for as a better striker, basically. But that is a fantastic through ball right there. A really good chance for Elliot to get his first goal as well, but unfortunately, he just couldn't quite get there. He couldn't quite put it into the back of the net. The defender did put a lot of pressure on him, and that was good defensive work by Gillingham. But they had a really good chance here in the 87th minute as they cross it into the middle. And oh my god, let's look at this back again. Let's just look at this back again. That has got to be the save of the season so far. Goal of the season and save of the season in one match, potentially. That is a really, really good save by our backup keeper. And he keeps us in the match and makes sure that we go through in the J-Paint Trophy. What a save it is from Polk. And he makes sure that we go through to the next round of the J-Paint Trophy. And that is going to cap off what has been a very eventful episode, guys. So hopefully you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As it really does help out my channel. But other than that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time for another video. Video. Thanks for watching.